Hey, A Push class. Today I'm going to talk about Frank Baum's classic story, The Wizard of Oz. The classic book and movie was scripted as an allegory on the Gilded Age and its main issue. So let's get started. Dorothy Gale was seen in the movie as an American teenager who had a love for her dog named Toto. But if you look deeper into it, Dorothy could be seen as the immigrants who wanted a better life and religious freedom. Toto was an example of her religion because she left home so that Toto was not taken away from her, just as the immigrants left their home so that they may have religious freedom. The tornado represents the new America or the industrialization of America. In the beginning of the movie, the color was black and white. After the tornado had came, the movie turned into the color which suggested the change in America. And the change in America was due to the widespread of industrialization. The Wicked Witch of the East, mostly known as the witch that Dorothy killed, represents Eastern financial industrial interests and their gold standards, political allies such as street bankers and the head of industry, because they practically controlled Midwestern farmers and tortured them. The Munchkins represent the Midwestern farmers because they blame their troubles on the Wicked Witch of the East. When the house was dropped on the Witch of the East, better known as the Granger Laws, the Munchkins were happy because they were freed from her control. When the Granger Laws were put into place, the Midwestern farmers were ecstatic because they did not have to pay high rates anymore for the transport of their goods. The Yellow Brick Road represents the gold standard. Many believed the end of the gold standard would end everything, but the citizens of the East, aka Munchkins, wanted to keep gold standard in place. That is why they urged Dorothy to follow the Yellow Brick Road. Even the name Oz, O-Z, is short for ounce, the standard measure of gold. The Scarecrow represents the Midwestern farmers because over the hardship years, they created a sense of self-doubt due to harsh ridicule. The harsh ridicule could be portrayed as the crows. The people ridiculed Midwestern farmers because they failed to understand the true causes of their economic predicament. The Tin Man represents the nation's industrial workers. His rusted condition coordinates with the harsh conditions of labor during the Depression of 1890s. The Cowardly Lion is represented by William Jennings Bryan. He was a populist leader who was famous for his cross of gold speech and was portrayed in the press as a lion. Although his supporters thought he was courageous, his critics opposed and said he was a coward because he was in opposition for the war with Spain and the invasion of the Philippines. The wizard could be best represented by William McKinley because he was presented as a great man and persuaded the people to elect him, but at the end of the day, he was just a common man. The Wizard of Oz was supposed to be a great wizard, but in reality, he was an ordinary man. The Emerald City represents Washington, D.C., and the Emerald Palace represents the White House because it holds the Wizard of Oz inside, a.k.a. the President of the U.S. To enter into the White House, a politician had to take the gold standard way or the yellow brick road. Everyone in the palace had to wear green spectacles to see the world through another color, which was green, or better known as money. The Wicked Witch of the West represents the rigid wasteland of the West. She is an example of the harmful forces of nature that plague farmers in the Middle West. Her domain shows a great example because it is dry and plain, just like the Western Plains. She can also be described as the railroad mongoose who destroyed land for the farmers and Indians. The Flying Monkeys represents the Native Americans. They are enslaved by the Witch of the West, and they have to face orders from her. The Whites were in control of the Native Americans and forced them to leave their sacred lands. Glinda is the Good Witch of the North in the movie. In the book, she's the Good Witch of the South. She represents Northern and Southern Farmers Alliances. The Farmers Alliances created the Pockets Party. So now we're coming to the end of the movie. And it turns out the solution to getting Dorothy home was her shoes, the ruby slippers, or the silver slippers. 
Adding silver to the money supply was the solution the whole time for America.